As Israel battles multiple fronts with stunning success in the past two weeks, many are wondering if this retaliation from Israel will deter or perhaps escalate conflict in the region. Colonel Miri Eisen joins us to discuss the next steps in Gaza, Yemen and Lebanon as the IDF battles on against multiple terror groups. Colonel Miri Eisen, thank you for joining us today. As always, a pleasure to have you on. To start, what's your take on the IDF strikes on the Houthis? Is what we saw yesterday something that can deter a further escalation? So deterring the further escalation has to do with who you're attacking. And yesterday, Israel openly and declared that we were attacking the Houthis. When we do this in an open way, meaning it isn't an attack that we as if did not do, we did this one. What Israel is saying, we can do things, and I'm going to be cute about this, far, far away. What is the other place that is far, far away? That would be the Islamic regime of Iran, and that also is thousands of kilometers away. We can do this kind of attack not only in Yemen, we can simultaneously do so as we're attacking the targets of Hezbollah in Lebanon, supposedly in Syria, and still fighting on the ground, both in the Gaza Strip and the ongoing confrontations in the West Bank. So really what we're seeing here is really an overall capability, and Israel is on the offensive, not just with its capabilities, but also in the rhetoric. Now, moving to Lebanon, there have been numerous calls for a ground operation to push Hezbollah back past the Litani River and restore security to the north. First, do you think that there will be a ground operation? And second, given the precarious situation in Lebanon and the international community's failure to enforce UN Resolution 1701, is pushing back Hezbollah, is pushing them back past the Litani, is that even achievable? It's achievable in military terms, and in that sense, I think that I, I am one who supports it. Let's be clear. Um, I'm not for military force if you can avoid it. But the reason I support it is because I think you cannot avoid it. I want my friends to be able to go back home. You cannot go back to Metula or Shtula or Kiryat Shmona when you know that on the other side of the border are still the Radwan forces. Those are the elite Hezbollah terror fighters, the ones that were preparing in October 7th attack. The ones that even as Israel from the air tries to attack them, they are dug in deep, they are inside the towns and villages, they are underground. And I say sadly, like with the Gaza Strip, we will have no choice if we want to really take care of it, but to go on ourselves. You mentioned the international forces. They have had a mandate from 2006 to stop that type of infiltration, to stop the terrorists from going down, to stop that buildup of arms. It was not done, not by UNIFIL. They work hand in hand with the Lebanese army. For me, Israel needs to go in and do it, but you do have the international forces there that perhaps, and I'll just put the perhaps, afterwards they would be the ones who would make sure that Hezbollah does not come back south after Israel clears out those arsenals of weapons. Now, in Gaza, we have also seen significant successes in recent days, but of course, no progress on the hostage situation. Israel, of course, is now in a position of strength. However, do you think that there will be further hostage negotiations or are we really at an impasse? I, I'm not sure I agree with the thing of us being in a point of strength when it comes to the hostages. The hostages, one of the reasons that they took the hostages is because they view the, these people, these friends, as um, bargaining chips. And for us, it's our fathers, grandparents, children, and etc. And same goes for Hezbollah up north, which is why we want to make sure that they cannot be in a situation that they would take hostages. So I don't think of us as being in a position of strength. Having said that, I think that Hamas is in a weaker position. And I know that sounds like it contradicts, but there's a difference between us being in a strength point and in making sure that Hamas is not in a strength point. And in this sense, the attacks against Hezbollah, the taking out of Hassan Nasrallah, the taking out of those commanders, that most definitely weakens Hamas's position, and that is good for us. Now, finally, we are running out of time, but the elephant in the room, the Islamic Republic of Iran, has been promising revenge for months. Is this regime a paper tiger, or are we really on the brink of war? So the question is if revenge is full war. There's a lot of ways that you can do revenge. The Islamic regime is one that does terrorism for revenge. I am worried about any place around the world that the Islamic regime of Iran perceives as being 
Israeli or being Jewish, it could just have a Star of David and they are going to see this as a target so that they could retaliate in their terms anywhere around the world. Will they fire directly against Israel? They did on the night of the 13th, 14th of April. They may do so again. I'm more worried about their retaliation around the world. All right, Colonel Miri Eisen, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.